And there are three simple things that you should observe in order to complete the cycle of healthy living. Number one is to eat balanced diet. Don't eat gari in the morning, aku in the afternoon, and powder diam in the evening. And you say, we need strength, we need strength. Your surname is not carbohydrate. Some persons have a strange, a strange idea of feeding. Strange. He wakes up in the morning, he takes yogurt in the afternoon, he goes and buys sugar cane. His name is sugar. Where? Your body needs it. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. It means man shall live by bread also. So if you live by the word of God, and you don't obey the law of bread, you will die because of the kind of bread you eat. Are you following? This is simple, but this is why many persons cannot be helped. Jesus recognized the place of bread. You must eat well if you must be healthy. Number two, I don't want to overemphasize this, is exercise. In 1 Timothy 4, 8, it says bodily exercise profits little. It says, but godliness profits all, unto all things. It says it profits in this life and in the life to come. Yes, bodily exercise profits little, but that little is enough for your lifetime. There are persons who can't even walk. They don't walk, as in just walk. This preaching I'm preaching now, there are some people, they sit down to preach. They wake up in the morning, they lie down to read, they lie down to eat, they lie down to do everything. And before you know what is happening, one of their lap becomes bigger than three people. No exercise. Nothing to stretch. They are too lazy, even at the detriment of their own health. If you don't exercise, the food you eat can't even work well. Your internal system can't function well. Somebody is 29. All his arteries and veins are already clogged with fat. Because he drinks yogurt, he eats pizza. When he finishes eating everything, he goes to sleep. And he sleeps for 12 hours. He wakes up in the morning. Ah, God is good. You will soon meet him in heaven. He is so good. That's why you will meet him very soon. Exercise is important. I know we can be busy. But be deliberate. The reason some of us... I don't have much time anymore. I'm a footballer. I was telling, <laughs> I was telling Sonny the other time, get me jerseys and boots. I talked and talked and talked, but I don't know what, maybe a spirit was whispering to him. <laughs> get me jersey and boots. I want to go back to the field. Maybe once a week or twice and do something. Exercise the body, exercise the mind. Not only the body, even the mind. Sometimes, go and sit somewhere. Take 30 minutes, play chess, and task your brain. Do something that makes you calculate. Think strategically. You are stretching yourself. Sometimes, sit down, read for 10 hours, stretch. It's not Bible. Just carry a book and read. As you are reading, after a while, your head will start aching. It's because your, your nerves are, not, they are no longer responsible. <laughs> you stretch the mind you stretch the body. There are persons here who have, for the past seven years, they've not read one book. That's why they cannot construct two sentences correctly. And even the one that should help them when they communicate with people via chat, all the chat is short letter and slangs. I'd like to. <laughs> because they are not exercised. I'm telling you why the quality of people's lives are declining every day. Do you think the, after men were cursed, the, the old people still lived older? All of us were under the curse before we met Jesus. But Abraham lived 
for more than 100 years. They were still living older. Why do you think people's the age bracket is going down every day? It's not because of the cost. The cost says man won't live above 120. But there were many people who by reason of strength entered 90. By reason of covenant exercise, healthy living, entered 120 something. Because when you insist, you can plunge into grace regardless of the dispensation. But today, a man who is 45 is, is, is a senior person. They were marrying at the age of 90 in the Old Testament. 90, 95, 100 years are young men. No. <laughs> if you go to the Asian continent now, people live for 135 and they are walking without walking stick. They reduce chemical intake and they are very, very active in exercise. Do you think the Chinese Kung Fu is just about fighting? It's one of the ways of improving health. They teach it to people to improve their health because they burn down fat, they stabilize the flow of oxygen, they stabilize and increase the volume of blood flow. They know these things. They drink tea all the time to, 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 to create, you know, um, chemical stability in the body and balance. They are not living old because they are calling the name of Jesus. Yes, serving God, following the covenant, trusting in God, can improve your health. And I'll talk about that. But nations that are without the knowledge of Christ, some of them are doing better health-wise than we who have miracle services, anointing services, feet washing. They are still better. Not because the miracle services are wrong. We will pray for the sick here tonight. They will be healed. But in addition to that, they understand other laws that God also put in place to help us. No exercise. No proper feeding. And you don't need so much money to feed well. Somebody has 1,000. He wants to cook food. He buys meat for 800. Are you a carnivorous animal? <laughs> no vegetable. Nothing balanced. It's meat. He just wants to eat meat. He sits down with three laps of chicken. Eha! Eha! Who to take it easy? He goes to where they are selling tea in the morning. He opens three pig milk with bread and drink the can first. Three cans of pig milk. He drinks it first. And he says, is there indomie here? <laughs> and then when cancer results, he says, it's the devil. Where is this satyr? In the name of Jesus. You are taking carcinogenic content. Would not you know cancer will come? Are you following what I'm sharing? It looks like a joke, but don't take it casual, uh, lightly. Number three is rest. This one is the hardest part. Because hard work always legitimizes a lack of rest time. But that ought not to be. Take time to rest, no matter how hard working you are. Sometimes, go and lie down and sleep. Is also part of spirituality. Because when you are sleeping, you can receive inspiration. I'm not saying be a lazy man and fold your hand, but if necessary, rest. If your body begins to give you sickness, respect it if it is possible. Don't always undermine the sickness your body gives you. In this area, some of us now, we are trying to make effort. Because I'm guilty here. You, but it has to be deliberate. Very deliberate. In recent times, I don't see anybody. I don't go out of my house until 12. I lie down on the floor. If I'm talking to God, I talk to God. If I'm reading, I'm reading. If I'm learning something on, on one platform or the other, I'm learning. It's after 12 o'clock I open my door. Because if you step out, you will walk until you go in. People call us around 1 a.m. And when you pick, they say, we know this is the only time we can get you. Are you aware that I'm married? As far as they have needs, they don't think. They must get you. And if they don't get you, they are offended. I'm not saying stop. 
But what I'm saying is, if it's time for your rest, be deliberate about it. If you can't control it, off your phone. When they reach you, apologize. Say, sorry, uh, my, my phone was off. And your phone was actually off. But take time to rest. At least one hour in a day, rest. Let your organs also relax. You are young. You say, no, it's the grace of God. Talk. We will check you out when you are 90. Let's see that grace of God. You are born in adrenaline using your youthful strength. You say, it's the grace of God. Ah, there's the, the. When you are 50 years, you will modify your doctrine. Rest now. Some persons are 30, but the liver has worked for 60, like more than a man of 60 years. Don't be lazy, but rest. Because somebody is now quoting the scripture. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hand, and poverty will come like an armed man. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first law, principle, or order for a healthy life is the health principle. You must live healthily. And to live healthily, you must eat balanced diet, you must exercise regularly, and you must rest. Somebody can be hearing me now say, ah, I thought we came to church for revival service. Which one is this? When a tumor grows, you will understand that it's better to walk in the blessing than to have a miracle. It's better to live in the land flowing with milk and honey than to have manna in the wilderness. Miracle is necessary because you have not entered the blessing. When you enter the blessing, you won't need miracles again. The guy who runs a car producing factory doesn't need the miracle of a car. He produces cars. Anyone he wants, he produce it. There's a power to generate it. But you who, does it, who don't work or produce car, even if they give you Volvo of 1998 model, it's a miracle. Are we together? So please take these things to heart and apply them. This may be somebody's miracle in this service. So you don't die of diabetes or you don't die of obesity. Take these things to heart. When you travel out of this country, you find